Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas. And earlier this week, Google just released their best and most intelligent model ever called Gemini 3. And I've seen so many different examples of creators building different things on, on Twitter, right? So for example, this is from Pietro Schirano, the founder of Magic Path, uh, building a Lego uh, brick builder with Gemini 3. And it's crazy because I took kind of the same approach here and I built my own uh, little you know, brick builder, but this time it has, it's more for like a city, uh, like a city simulator, right? So yeah, I can put like different platforms. I can put like, like a road, for example. So it's, it's extremely advanced and it also has very good lighting. So as you can see, everything, you know, reflects based off of, of one specific light source. There's even like clouds here. There's like fog as you scroll outwards. If I turn it on dark mode, as you can see, we even have like light reflections coming from these specific lights. You can build stuff with Gemini 3. Gemini 3 integrates stuff like 3GS, for example, and you can get really great quality projects like this in just minutes. So today what I wanna do is I actually wanna talk about what makes Gemini 3 so special so that we actually know what to do to enhance our prompts whenever we're building something with Gemini 3. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. But before we get started, I'd love to invite you guys to my Discord community. We are a bunch of different startup founders, designers, developers from all around the world. We get together every single weekday to talk about different tools, different topics, different challenges happening in our lives. So if you guys are interested in joining these calls, link is down in the description below. So the first thing that popped up when I read, when I was reading this article, a new era of intelligence with Gemini 3, we have this note from the, from the CEO that basically talks about state of the art reasoning now, some of you might not know what state-of-the-art reasoning is, but what it is is that you give the AI a complex problem and it does a very, very good job at taking this problem apart, understanding the connections that the different parts of the problem have to each other and trying as hard as possible to be like a human to connect these different parts of the problem. Now let's look at this prompt, for example, create an editorial style website for a SaaS service that allows users to make recordings with noise cancellations and other features to get a clear audio and then transcribe it and turn it into to a Twitter posts and nice hooks, right? So it's like some type of audio startup that helps you with your social media. Use instrument serif fonts for the titles and instrument sans fonts for the other texts and descriptions. Use premium colors, no, gra no fancy gradients minimal professional make a hero a bento grid with the features situations when it's important to get a nice audio and a transcription with an ability to turn it into post testimonials pricing cta footer use deep green colors and shout out to anton grids for the prompt here now if we make ai build this with um let's say something like claude 4 or gpt5 we get what we want right we get a very minimal website with the fonts that we want and it might look actually pretty nice. We get our Brent Bento grid, but it's it's still pretty like basic looking, right? There's nothing, nothing creative about this. It really, you know, you can tell that an AI kind of generated this because it's just so simple and it gets the job done, right? There's no creativity, there's no connections, there's no creative thinking. Now, in the meantime, if you build something with Gemini 3, as you can see, just with the hero section, you can tell that there's a huge difference, right? Clarify your thoughts. It understands the context and kind of makes one piece of that text highlight a little bit more than the rest. You can tell that there's a difference between the line height of the title text and the description text over here. We have this nice little player over here that kind of understands the context of this whole startup. We can scroll down and we see that we have a nice Benzo grid with specific sections that are a little bit more, you know, they pop out a little bit more. It's not just a very simple bento grid with just text, and like a normal text and, and just a, an icon, right? We have nice sections with little hover effects like this, very, very nicely placed in terms of layout. And overall, the use of color is just much better, looks much more cleaner and gives your user, the designer, a great head start when it comes to designing something in comparison to one of the older models. Now, another thing that really surprised me from the specific blog post that Google gave us is this learn anything tab. So basically it says here, Gemini pushes the frontier of multi-model reasoning to help you learn in ways that make sense for you by combining its state-of-the-art reasoning 
vision and spatial understanding, leading multilingual performance and one million token context window. So for example, you can give it some type of handwritten recipe or something else in some other some other language like Korean, and you can tell it to tr translate and tr transcribe these, these uh, recipes from Korean to English. And basically what it does is that it gives you like some nice little um, recipe cookbook in English with the information that it gave you. So it's basically teaching you in English based on the way that the original language presented it in. So for example, if you're like in Magic Path and you want to create a scientific learning module for kids to learn about the structure of DNA, and make it interactive and visually impressive, you could do that. We get something like this where we can basically just spin around this, this DNA and click on one of these and learn more, right? You can click on this, learn more a little bit about that on the, on the bottom panel. We get some quick facts over here teaching you that. So, but it basically combines this interactivity with the UI, which makes it much more impressive. This also comes with trying to do complicated things or learn how to do complicated things like solving a Rubik's cube, right? I built out this, this glass Rubik's cube and you can, you know, refresh the style and you can see, all right, we have U, M, D, Shift, E, B, F, U, R, and you can try to like click on all these different buttons to eventually get to that main stage, right? Go like that, R, B, I'm pretty bad at this, but you can try your best to kind of get to that to that original state. And finally, the last thing that I want to talk about is this multi-model um, feature that Gemini has. So basically, you can give it different forms of media, whether it be PDF, whether it be a website, whether it be a video or some type of image, and it can create something based off of that, right? So it has this multi-modal way of understanding things and then creating things. A good example of that is that I created this little sketch today inside of Magic Path showing kind of like an example of, of what I want to build. You know, this is a website title. This is a description with two to three sentences. This is a button. I added like these four different things over here without any context really. And I added like this little, this rectangle with this kind of sketch in the in, uh, behind. It's kind of simplified maybe like a, to kind of, uh, you know, represent like a stack of cards or something like that. And I, what I did was I just basically did this, got it all together, clicked on make it real. And I basically got this result, right? Which is this medical data visualization service company that I asked it to build, right? Transforming complex medical data into clarity. We have this nice font. We have this description text that is two sentences long, exactly what I wanted. We have these two buttons, the primary and the secondary. And we have these four different sections over here that look really nice. And we have this little interactive element over here, which is basically like the main USP of this specific company, right? And not only does it work with like, you know, text or sketches or images, you can also give it specific videos like this. For example, you upload a video, you give it in, you give it to the Gemini 3 via Google AI Studio, you give it some certain type of prompt, like recreate this and add some interactions for a mobile app, use only HTML and one file, right? And they upload that video with the prompt it's thinking, it's reasoning, like we spoke about before. It generates the code, and then you can paste it to some type of code editor that accepts HTML, and you basically get that mock-up based off of that video. And we can, for example, go to any type of website and use this web capture component or web capture uh, Chrome extension and copy a specific section like this, copy this element, bring it back into Magic Path, paste that somewhere over here. You can basically bring in this specific section and have different types of styles for this section with different types of elements that represent like the arrows over here, for example, or this one has these two little dots. This one, the dots are a little bit over, but basically you can use Gemini 3 to kind of uh, brainstorm on different sections for your product. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it from my side. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. That helps the channel a lot. I know that most of you that are watching are not subscribed. Join my Discord community if you wanna chat. And yeah, thanks so much for joining. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.